Hello everyone, myself Dr. Parth and today I am going to teach you one important topic from the dermatology from the skin system that is the basal cell carcinoma. So first of all, what is our learning objective for the today's lecture? It comes under the competency number 34.2 as per the Indian NMC curriculum in which we need to understand the risk factor pathogenesis pathology and history of BCC. So first we will discuss about the introduction, what is basal cell carcinoma? Its underlying cause that is etiology, pathogenesis means mechanism of the development of BCC in our body, then clinical presentation, gross morphology, microscopic morphology, variants and few lines of treatment. So first of all introduction, what is basal cell carcinoma? So it is one of the slow growing invasive cancer, right? It is a malignant epithelial tumor, but it's a very slow growing. And it is rarely metastatized. It doesn't spread to the other organs like that of other malignancy. You know, it is the one of the exception in which although it is malignant, usually it doesn't metastatize via blood into other organs, right? Which is a common site of development. So basal cell carcinoma usually develop in a sun exposed area, sun exposed skin, usually develop in fair skin individual, right? So classical site is a line that is drawn from the angle of mouth. Here is the angle of mouth to the pinna of ear. We need to draw a line here and basal cell carcinoma usually involve these areas, right? Above these lines from the angle of mouth to the pinna of ear. So this is the basal cell carcinoma, right? It's believed to be an adnexal carcinoma, probably because of the infundibulum hair follicle derivation, right? and some thought that is arise from the basal cell of the epidermis. Its morphology is similar to like that of basal cell that is seen in our epidermis of the skin and that's why the name is basal cell carcinoma. We will discuss it in detail in later on in the slide. Alright, so first of all, what is etiopathogenesis? Why it develop? So basal cell carcinoma can occur in an immunosuppressed individual in which the immunity is defective or if the patient is having DNA repair defect. Particularly if the patient is having xeroderma pigmentosum like that of genetic condition that will put a patient at a risk of development of BCC because if the patient have this genetic disease xeroderma pigmentosum then the defective DNA mutated DNA will not get repaired right the second important cause is mutation in the PTCH gene this particular gene is one of the tumor suppressor gene means they will prevent the cell proliferation they will apply a break to the cell proliferation so this tumor suppressor gene is mutated in a basal cell carcinoma. What is the role of PTCH in our body? So, uh, you know, the PTCH is one of the tumor suppressor gene that will negatively regulate the Hedgehog signaling. Now, what is the Hedgehog signaling? So, you know, Hedgehog signaling, you can see in this diagram that it will lead to cell proliferation, new blood vessel formation, angiogenesis, you know, stem cell self renewal capacity and apoptosis suppression. So by hedgehog signaling activation, there will be proliferation of cell in our body. There will be new blood vessel formation. There will be evasion of apoptosis and there will be stem cell cell renewal capacity, which is one of the molecular basis of cancer formation. So if hedgehog signaling is not regulated by PTCA, then cancer can develop. And here in this particular cancer, there will be germline mutation. There could be mutation in a PTCA tumor suppressor gene. So hedgehog signaling will not regulate it and patient can develop cancer. If the one LA is defective, it is known as a neighborhood basal cell carcinoma syndrome. And you know, the second hit, second normal LA will be mutated by ultraviolet light exposure. So in this way, there will be homozygous defective PTCH tumor suppressor gene and which will lead to cancer development, which, you know, because of which the hedgehog signaling will not regulate it. That is one of the important etiology. Obviously, ultraviolet B, B rays exposure from the sunlight can damage our DNA. And it can proliferate in a cell, uh, you know, cell cycle to uh, develop the carcinoma. Telomerase reactivation. What is telomerase? It is one of the enzymes that prevent the telomere shortening. We know that cells can divide only up to 60 to 70 times, you know, because of the shortening of telomeres. Telomere is a short stretch of DNA present at the end of chromosome. But the telomerase enzyme can prevent the telomere shortening. And you know, the cancer cell become immortal because of this enzyme. Usually, our normal, normal somatic cell can divide only up to 60 to 70 times. But by addition of telomerase, they can proliferate for a long time by addition of nucleotide. And you know, uh, that is also one of the etiology for development of BCC. 
smoking in human papilloma virus also put you at the risk of development of BCC. We know that HPV virus, particularly E6 and E7 protein, will inhibit a P53 and RB gene function. So, patient can develop carcinoma. P53 can be mutated by ultraviolet lights. I will not go in a detail of uh, P53 and RB gene function because it's already covered in my tumor suppressor gene video. You know, Australia and New Zealand peoples, those who are fair skinned people, uh, the prevalence of BCC is very high as compared to uh, non fair individuals. So, what is the clinical presentation, clinical feature of this basal cell carcinoma? So, obviously, the site is from the angle of mouth to the pinna to ear, so it can be seen at the tip of the nose, you know, over the cheek, that is the area. Initially, it could present as a papule, gradually develop into nodule and then ulcer, right? Sometimes it contains the melanin black pigment so it can resemble mimic like that of nevus or melanoma but it's it's a mimic only because it's a pigmented bcc right so melanin like pigment sometimes can be seen black color you know it may ulcerate from the papule there will be development of nodule and it will ulcerate after ulceration it can locally invade and it can locally erode the underlying bone or the facial sinus right it can erode the underlying bone or sinus like a rodent it will nibble the underlying tissue like a rodent and that's why the name is rodent ulcer so the ulcer that is developing basal cell carcinoma is known as a rodent ulcer this is the rodent ulcer right here you can see a rodent ulcer it could be superficial or somewhat deep if it is infiltrated it is a deep right and erythematous nodulo ulcerative is a presentation initially there will be nodule and gradually it will ulcerate it's a slowly enlarging ulcer with purely rolled out border. It is also known as a rodent ulcer. So, this is the gross morphology of basal cell carcinoma. Now, how will be the microscopic appearance? If you take a biopsy, then what is the micro light microscopic appearance? So, in a light microscopy, tumor cell exactly resemble like that of normal basal cell layer of our epidermis. Now, which are the layers of our epidermis? We know that skin is made up of epidermis and dermis. In epidermis, we have a five, five layer. The superficial one is stratum corneum, below which we have a thin layer of stratum lucidum, below which there is a presence of stratum granulosum, in which the granules are present within the cells, stratum granulosum. Below which there is a presence of stratum spinosum, which is made up of keratinocytes, like, right? So, keratinocyte is present in stratum spinosum. And last layer of epidermis is stratum germinatum or basal cell layer, in which we have a basal cells. So, these are the basal cells elongated. Now, the basal cell carcinoma cells similarly look like this and that's why the name given is basal cell carcinoma. It's a deep basophilic epithelial cell. It have a oval elongated nucleus with narrow rim of cytoplasm. Right? It is elongated cell, elongated nucleus. Nesting pattern is seen and they will protrude the underlying papillary dermis. They will invade into the underlying papillary dermis. Now, what is the characteristic microscopic feature so you know they will show the peripheral pellucidic they will show the pellucidic pattern of arrangement see this is the pellucidic arrangement in the border you can see that these cells are arranged parallel to each other right they are arranged parallel to each other so peripheral pellucidic is seen columnar tumor cell and peripheral pellucidic this is the pellucidic pattern all right and in between the tumor island and adjacent stroma in which they are invading clefting artifact can be seen that's because of shrinkage of the basal cell nest and that's why clefting artifact can be seen which is a very important differentiating point from the adnexal neoplasm right the close differential diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma is adnexal neoplasm trichoblastoma right so it can be differentiated by this uh, the growth could be superficial or nodular deep right so here the photomicrograph showing the microscopic appearance of basal cell carcinoma you can see that there is a peripheral pellucidic of basal cells right this is the nodule see this is the nodular growth it is infiltrating the underlying stroma and in a stroma in between the stroma and this cell nest you can see a white colored cleft artifact right and peripheral pellucidic can be seen here parallel arrangement of columnar basal cells again you can see a peripheral pellucidic in this schematic diagram there is a shrinkage artifact in between the stroma and cell nest again this is a cell nest which is infiltrating the stroma you can see that it infiltrates the stroma again here infiltrating basal cell nest this is diagram this diagram also photomicrograph showing nest of basaloid cells with peripheral pellucidic right peripheral pellucidic is characteristic feature and in between the stroma and the cell nest there is a white color clefting artifact 
All right. <clears throat> so this was about the microscopy of basal cell carcinoma. Now, which could be the other variants of basal cell carcinoma? This is the classical appearance, right? But what could be the different variants? So, if they characteristically show a nodular growth, then it is nodular variant. If the tumor cells are only superficially spreading, then it is known as a superficial spreading variant of BCC. Another variant is infiltrating BCC. If it is as admixed with squamous cell carcinoma, then it is known as basosquamous carcinoma. If there is a cytoplasmic vacuolation within the cell, then it is known as a clear cell variant. If the presentation is hair follicle differentiation, then it is infundibular cystic pattern, right? Infundibular cystic variant. If melanin-like black color pigment is seen within the tumor grossly and microscopically, then it is pigmented basal cell carcinoma. All right. Now, how will you treat this basal cell carcinoma? What is the treatment? So, as we know, it is rarely metastatized. It's a slow-growing tumor. So, simple surgical excision is enough. That is the treatment of choice. You know, modified surgical excision can be done in the form of two-layer surgery. First, tumor cell is removed. Then, thin layer of tissue is removed. And it is visualized under microscope that it is uh, that it shows a cancer cell or not. That is known as a mouse surgery. Electrode desiccation and curettage also uh, one of the mode of treatment. Radiation can be given and topical anti-neoplastic cream in the form of imipimod and 5-fluorouracil can be prescribed. But the base treatment is surgical excision. All right. So that was all about the basal cell carcinoma. At the nut cell, I want to share that it is it rarely metastatized. It is slow-growing cancer. You know, it is seen from a line that is drawn from angle of mouth to the pinna of ear. It is also known as a rodent ulcer because it will invade the underlying bone and facial sinuses. It is known as a basal cell carcinoma because the cell resemble like that of basal cell of epidermis. Etiopathogenesis includes seroderma pigmentosum in which there is a defective DNA repair, mutation in a tumor suppressor gene PTCH, uh, you know, uh, ultraviolet sunlight can damage the DNA, telomerase reactivation, HPV virus, smoking, and fair skin individual are at a more, more risk for development of BCC. Clinical presentation is first papule, then nodule, and ulcer. Ulcer is known as a rodent ulcer because it nibbles the underlying tissue. And ulcer shows the rolled out border. Microscopically, main two characteristic feature is peripheral palisading of the tumor cell. And it is separating from the adjacent stroma by a artifact, white colored artifact. That's because of shrinkage of the cells during tissue processing. So here you can see a nest of basal cells with peripheral palisading. These are the certain variant. The important one is pigmented, superficial spreading, basosquamous and clear cell. And treatment is surgical excision. MCQ. 71 year old male had a 10 skin lesion removed over the course of 4 years. Each time the lesion was described as a nest of cell in dermis with peripheral palisading of nuclei. What is the most characteristic of this skin lesion? So here the peripheral palisading is present. It is a recurrent tumor. So it is a case of BCC, right? And in BCC we know that it is associated with mutation in a tumor suppressor gene, PTCH. So the answer would be T. Alright, so see that's the references. Thank you very much. I hope your fundamental about the basal cell carcinoma get cleared. By this lecture. I will be right back with a new video. Till then, take care and bye bye.